9-11 Evidence and Theory Is Andrew Johnson a Truth Fascist? 6th of June 2013 This is a response to a Red Ice posting which is itself a response to my article entitled Red Ice Radio Joins the 9-11 Disinformation Promotion Brigade Let me say at the outset that I am upset at the way this has turned out and I agree with Henrik Palmgren what he says in his audio segment that this amounts to more infighting and this is not a good thing. My original posting, and many like it, is are born out of frustration in relation to the 9-11 cover-up. Before responding to Henrik's deposition, a YouTube deposition that is, in more specific terms, I will state that it is true I did not contact Henrik before posting my article because I was so upset with the Harriet interview and the other interviews that he'd done. But neither did he contact me before posting his deposition. I do not consider Red Ice as a whole to be spreading disinformation. The title of my article was Red Ice Radio Joins the 9-11 Disinformation Promotion Brigade. Notice the 9-11 in there? My article is specifically about 9-11 and what we know. Henrik does not seem to like me stating that certain things are known, and yes, there are other areas of 9-11 research and other topics that show such as Red Ice Cover where things are not known. It is dishonest to characterise evidence as theory and vice versa, and this is what Henrik did in his interview with Niels Harrett. We could have kept everything else the same, done almost everything else the same, but my main objection is that he did this. And in relation to the crime of 9-11 and its investigation, this is, to me, the most important thing. If this upset Henrik or anyone else, then I am sorry, but that is how things are for me. And I'll go on to some further points I'd like to make, if you'd like to listen. Henrik's overall thrust in his deposition is in line with the email I received from Red Ice Radio a day or two ago. Please see bottom of the article. They did not respond to the questions I then asked them in my follow-up email, or at least they haven't yet. Red Ice Radio does not link to my original article. My website is not mentioned. Fair enough, folks can use Google, but I deliberately link to all the important sources of information when I am writing articles like this. In his deposition, Henrik does not read out my article in full. That's the one I referred to previously including the opening complimentary and explanatory remarks about the nature of his programmes, which Henrik repeatedly states in his deposition, I do not understand. Henrik discusses that I mentioned we went to some trouble to get him a copy of the book, that is, Where Did the Towers Go? At the time, the, the, a PDF version was prepared specifically for Henrik's interview. It is a 500-page book, with 800 images, and he does not mention this. We thought he had the same philosophy about knowing the truth as we do, so he would need the evidence to decide what the truth was. Henrik, however, apparently wants to remain neutral about what the 9-11 evidence shows, or at least on his programme he wants to remain neutral. In doing this, in the Niels Harrit interview, he characterised evidence as theory and analysis as ideas or opinion. Hence, it seems we were mistaken about how his programme would work in this particular case. The title of my article is referenced quite a few times, and it, perhaps it is an inflammatory title, but is it in line with what I have written up in detail in 9-11 Finding the Truth, which people can read separately, where I've used similar titles for a number of the articles. Again, my specific reaction to the Harriet programme was because it was about 9-11, I am also interested in many of the topics that Red Ice covers, and for many, we cannot know as much of the truth as we can, can about what happened to the WTC. This basically boils down to the amount of evidence available which can be studied carefully. I do, by the way, understand Hen Henrik's philosophy about the programme, but I don't agree that it is appropriate to apply this same philosophy to the study of what happened at the World Trade Centre. 9-11 was a huge crime, using black technology. It has affected the world more than probably any other topic discussed on Red Eyes. 
Dr. Wood has investigated a large part of this crime at the World Trade Center site, worked out what happened, and she has taken action by submitting the evidence in a fraud case, and I tried to help. This is one key thing that Henry did not really bring out in his deposition, or posting. He mentions a phrase from my article about Wood's key TAM case, but no details. And this is very important. This is a very important point. I was not attempting to discredit Red Ice Radio as a whole. I essentially said in the, that in the opening paragraph of my article. Also see point two above. In my article I stated about him that it was dishonest to characterise evidence as theory. At the beginning I stated, Henrik Palmgren is an informed researcher who is not afraid to explore the various rabbit holes that present themselves to us. I hope people as ever will consider all the evidence available here. Henrik suggests several times Red Ice Radio should be run the way Andrew Johnson says. He doesn't exactly say this, I'm paraphrasing. This is not what I am saying. In this area, I appreciate some of the points Henrik makes, and that this is why I wrote above, I know it might sound too harsh or judgmental, but... However, Henrik did not read the, out this sentence in, from my article. It is true that the Harriet interview page does link to my own interview and Dr Wood's, but I did note in my article that he had interviewed myself and Dr Wood in 2010. I also never asked him to represent Dr Judy Wood or me. I can appreciate that what I wrote in my original article can be interpreted as suggesting that, but it does not say that. What I wrote above states that we can know the truth and speak the truth, and we can challenge those who are lying, as I am challenging lies here. Henrik makes comments about asking for my stamp of approval. That is misrepresenting what I wrote. See point 13 above. Number 16. I should be reading out these points and I haven't. Number 16. I never asked them to censor or remove people from the debate or discussion. Where did I suggest that? I expected Henrik to state that Thermite could not turn the towers to dust. Anyone can know this from simple observation. I see now that this was an unrealistic hope or expectation. Also, I did not suggest we should not allow them a voice. I suggested he could use his own voice to challenge them when they are not telling the truth. Again, I am clearly expecting too much, and, as Heinrich more or less says himself, this is where we disagree on our approach to things, and perhaps why I don't or couldn't do a regular series of podcasts like he does, because I would quickly become unpopular. I didn't write and post this article to become unpopular, but to point out where people are not telling the truth about what happened to the World Trade Centre. One observation is that it seems many people turn to services like Red Ice Radio because they feel the mainstream media is not telling them the whole truth. Should it not be important to present the truth or refer to the truth when we can prove what it is? Number 17. Henrik talks about 9-11 round table debates and how they would turn out. I agree with him about that. One only has to look on internet forums to know about this. And, of course, Mr. Harrett mentioned the 9-11 consensus website at the end, so let me wish him luck with that. When truth and lies are set against one another, there will be disagreements, right? Point 18. Henrik is somewhat mistaken about the other side talking to us, i.e. myself and Dr. Wood. We have talked to him in the past, and some of these conversations are documented in my book, 9-11 Finding the Truth. Indeed. I referred to one such conversation with Niels Harriet in 2008 in my original article. Sadly, Henrik does not reference this in his posting or his spiel. He does not say, I did not realise Andrew had contacted Niels Harriet in 2008. And Dr Wood has quite correctly said in the past, the truth does not have sides. Henrik makes a number of more emotive remarks trying to suggest I have said things I have not said. For example, he says, when I read Andrew's material, it's like... Other people should not be allowed to express opinions. This is not true. What I asked for in my article was for people to understand the difference between opinion and evidence. Also, when I was referring to George Monbiot, I was specifically referring to what we know about 9-11 and climate change. We know that Monbiot is wrong about 9-11. That is to say, it isn't just that Monbiot has another view. Again, let me re-emphasise, in terms of 9-11, we're talking about a crime. A crime that Dr Judy Wood and myself have investigated. And Henrik has, by his own admission, not investigated. At least, not to the same extent. 
Harriet, Riss, Barrett, Gaffney and many others who talk about 9-11 have not put their evidence up to legal scrutiny and incurred the associated costs as we did. Instead, for example, Jeremy Riss has mischaracterised the evidence that Dr Wood has submitted to court, describing it as space beams. Dr Wood's qualifications and experience are also overlooked. Out of all these people in relation to 9-11, Dr Wood has the most appropriate ex expertise to determine what happened at the World Trade Centre. Point 21. Henrik swears a few times in the deposition and then, around the 30 minute mark, he says that I, Andrew Johnson, toot this religiously. Does Henrik think I should not tell people what I know is true? Should I not tell them that the WTC turned mostly to dust? Instead, I should say, well, it might have been thermite, but if I don't include thermite in my discussion, I would be being religious. What nonsense. Henrik makes points about infighting, and I agree with him on this. But why is he insulting me? Isn't this more of the same? So what are the options when we know liars are receiving promotion? To keep quiet? Heck, all I did was post an article on my website. And according to Henrik's philosophy about things, it's just my opinion, right? So why is Henrik so bothered about what I have written here? He should let people make their own minds up about it, according to his way of doing things. Instead, he spends good portions of an hour attacking and insulting my character, whilst omitting important elements of my original posting. Also, Henrik says that I do not know him as a person, and neither does he know me, yet he makes generalisations about how I must think. Henrik later called me childish, and then compares me to the official group that investigated 9-11. Wow, I must be powerful. He then later calls me a truth fascist, a very loaded term. But maybe that's accurate. I suppose I'd rather be called a truth fascist than a lie fascist. Perhaps I should even take this as a compliment, as it means I am uncompromising when it comes to the truth. 24. Henrik thankfully reads out the conclusion of my article, but then kind of implies that I am wrong to be confident that I, I or we do know these things. He then mentions Richard Andrew Grove. He is not mentioned in my article, and I have not referenced Grove's work anywhere on my site. Of my website. I actually found Richard Andrew Grove's interview very interesting, but really couldn't make any useful comments about it, as I have not studied it in depth. I never said what I wrote about the WTC disqualified Grove's work. Why did Henrik include this? In referencing the other speakers, I linked to specific information and evidence about what they had said and why I considered it to be disinformation. Henrik does not specifically mention risk defacing images of our books and using them in the videos. I don't think he specifically mentions why I was so upset that thermite is being touted by Harriet as any kind of valid explanation for the WTC's destruction. However, Henrik does make some mention of how myself and Dr. Wood have been attacked, which of course is true. 25. I am not afraid of my conclusions, and I am not afraid they will be discredited. I post them because I consider these conclusions and pieces of evidence are important to our future, all of us. Henrik clearly disagrees as there aren't any conclusions that he thinks are worth taking these sorts of actions over. So, now, because I have posted these conclusions, I am the enemy. Henrik has spent a whole hour responding to my article, attacking my character and my approach, whilst mitting out important points of what I actually wrote in the original article. So I have to invest more time in addressing these omissions here. See point 22. Once again... I am sorry if I have upset any Red Ice listeners or guests or basically anyone. This was not my intent. My intent is try and keep to try and keep the record straight in terms of what happened at the World Trade Center. In his discussion, Henrik does not make this his focus, but it is in mine. In summary, my main criticism of Henrik, even if I wrote it badly in the article, is it is dishonest to characterize evidence as theory and vice versa. This is what Henrik did in his interview with Harriet. He could have kept everything else the same, done almost everything else the same, but my main objection is that he did this. And because this is all in relation to the crime of 9-11, this is, to me, the most important thing. If this upset Henrik or anyone, then I am sorry, but that is how things are for me. Again, in this article, I am just expressing my opinion about the recent Red Ice 9-11 related programmes, and I have not expressed opinions about other Red Ice programmes. Other people can decide whether they agree with anything I write here. Please remember 
But the important thing here is not Andrew Johnson or Red Ice Radio. It is the evidence of what happened on 9-11 and what it means to our future. Well, the response that I've made here is longer than the original article. I do hope it was worth you spending the time listening to this. And uh, there is an email, which I won't read out here, but it's fr uh, from someone I uh, Red Ice Radio, and you can read it at the bottom of the article. And uh, my questions to them about 9-11 have not 9-11 evidence have not yet received a response thank you very much for listening this is andrew johnson and i wish you well